in what way do you feel you're inadequate for medicine is it because you don't feel like you're smart enough because i'm here to tell you that it's not about that Hey everyone, thanks for coming. In this video, I'm gonna be answering the questions you asked me on Instagram about how you can get into medicine. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Ashima and you're watching my channel, Aesthetic Academic. I started this channel because a few years ago, I got kicked out of university. And then a few years after that, I managed to get accepted into a medicine degree at Australia's best university. So I thought that was a story of hope that was worth sharing. I make videos like this one, informative how-tos about how you can get into medicine. And I also make videos about my experience at medical school and what that's been like for me. Subscribe if those things interest you. Before I start, some of the questions that I got asked, I answered in a previous Q&A, which I'll link on the screen now. In that one, I talked about whether or not you should do volunteering, motivation, and self-doubt. So if those are questions that you wanted to know the answer to, please check out that video. A few GAMSAT related questions as well, I've answered in my GAMSAT series. So I'll link that now so you can check it out. Who did I turn to for advice? So I actually didn't have anyone that I could turn to to get advice for the medical school's admissions. I didn't know anyone to ask. So I spent a lot of time on the official university website and scoured all of their MD pages to find all the information that I needed. That's another reason that I set up this YouTube channel because there are those moments where you would love to ask someone just one small thing about the process but not having someone to ask can make it really hard. So please always DM me or comment. I always reply to all my messages. I want you to feel comfortable about messaging me because I love answering them. So please, any questions, just let me know. Is it worth doing a second degree for someone with a low GPA, below six or low six? I would recommend that you exhaust all your options first. When in your tertiary education, did you get the grades that were kind of bringing that score down to just below a six? Because a six is still a really good score, right? If it was in your first year, then you have an option to do an honors year. And then a lot of universities will take your scores from your final two years of undergraduate and your honors year. So it kind of wipes your first year if that was the year that you kind of weren't doing your best at uni. If your lower grades are scattered throughout your degree, it's a bit of a different situation. In Australia, I know that at least in New uni has a minimum GPA so their minimum GPA is five and it's only a hurdle which means that so long as you get above five you can still apply for medicine and they'll rank everyone based on their GAMSATs. I believe that it might be UQ as well, but don't quote me. I just know for a fact that it's Sydney. That option is still open to you if you've got a GPA in the sixes or low sixes. For every other uni though, you do need a little bit of a higher GPA. I think at least in the 6.5 area to be realistic. I did a second degree after I stuffed up my first one and that was a really good decision for me because I needed that clean slate and there was no coming back from my GPA. That Like there was no recovery from being that short. It. All things considered, if you're really committed to studying medicine, then I do think that doing another degree is a good idea. If you do decide to go down that pathway though, I highly recommend taking a break between your two degrees. Please don't go from your first degree to your second degree back to back. You will almost certainly burn yourself out and it will just be so devastating to spend another $30,000 and another three years doing another degree and then to find yourself burnt out towards the end of it. So you really wanna avoid that happening. It's best to take the scenic route, take a couple of years off and then start studying for your next degree when you really feel like it. If there's even like a slight part of you that's like, oh, maybe I am tired of studying right now. Just don't do it. Just wait until you're like raring to go and really looking forward to studying because that is the passion that you're gonna need to drive yourself to that degree and to get really good grades. Having a gap between your studies is also a really good time to reflect on what worked and what didn't work about your first degree. You were doing something right. To get a six is not an easy feat either. So figure out what was working and then spend time realizing what wasn't working for you. Identify what it is that is your pitfall and what has stopped you from getting that six to the 6.5 is it is it that you start assignments the night before? Is it that you fall behind on lectures? Just figure it out and give yourself time to figure it out. I'm scared of GAMSAT section three because I do not have a science background. I hope it helps you to hear me say that I don't think that my science background really helped me that much in the GAMSAT because anytime I tried to apply my previous science knowledge to the questions, almost every time I got the question wrong, the way the questions are designed, it's not designed for you to just apply your previous knowledge. They're designed so that you have to look in the question stem for information. It's not really a theoretical knowledge test. It's a test on how well you can read the question on the spot. A benefit of having a science background and doing the GAMSAT is that you're just familiar with the vocab. So you're not scared of the words that come up in section three. But other than that, my prior knowledge wasn't really useful. If I was you, I would spend a lot of time brushing up on maths, trying to do as much handwritten maths as you can with significant figures and exponentials and doing all of those sort of maths by hand because that will really get you a lot of marks. So try not to fixate on it too much because even if you're not as strong 
strong in that section as someone else is. There's two whole other sections that you have the power to be really, really good at. You don't have to be perfect in every section. Stick to doing the practice questions. Don't grade yourself percentage wise. Just have a look at the answers and see what you got wrong and why. Don't grade yourself because that will just be a confidence killer and you will start to improve. You obviously have an interest in science, right? Because you want to study medicine. You're curious about it. Once you get over that fear and once you start investing in learning about science, I'm sure you'll really, really like it. How hard is it to get a high GPA versus high GAMSAT for people who have low six GPAs? It's really hard to compare them, but they both obviously have their pros and cons. GAMSAT is a lot more unknown, so I feel like it's a real psychological thing because you never know what is actually going to be on the test and that fact in itself can be really intimidating. It's also so broad that it can feel like limitless the amount of stuff that they can test you on. That is also super intimidating. During your studying for the GAMSAT as well, there's no objective feedback that you get, so it always sort of feels like you're pissing in the wind and you don't actually know what you're doing. But on the plus side, you can do it again. It's also a more concentrated amount of time, so you're really only studying for three or four months. For GPA, it's so much more about persistence and your ability to work consistently over three years, which is not an easy feat. But on the flip side of that coin, there's no surprises in uni. If you go to class, if you do the assignments, if you do the exams, you will get a good score and you get feedback along the way as well. So you always know how you're going. In that way, I think the psychological burden of uni is less than the GAMSAT, but for a longer period of time. Having said that, I think everyone has it in them to get a really good GPA and a really good GAMSAT. Perhaps the freak scores like the A are reserved for a specific kind of person but all the competitive scores high 60s low 70s I think that's for everyone if you really try and commit yourself to it you can still get a really amazing score how do you deal with feelings of inadequacy it's been hindering my studies these days when thoughts like that enter your head, you really have to make a conscious effort to say to yourself, is this a helpful thought? And if it is an unhelpful thought, you wanna try your best to dismiss it. In what way do you feel you're inadequate for medicine? Is it because you don't feel like you're smart enough? Because I'm here to tell you that it's not about that. It's about how hard you work. Do you feel like you're not able to work hard enough? Why? Why can't you work that hard? See, working hard is not something that you're born with. It's something you work on, right? There's no reason for you to feel inadequate about something like that when it's something that you can work on. Ruminating on those thoughts for too long is a great way to not realize your full potential. So try to get a piece of paper and write down what you are good at. Write down literally the opposite of that sentence. Write, I am adequate because this. Stop getting in your own way by telling yourself these falsehoods about you and your ability to achieve. What gives you the right to tell yourself that you're inadequate and why? Why would you say such horrible things about yourself that aren't true? When you feel those thoughts coming into your brain, you just have to turn them off. You just have to say, no, I'm not listening to this stupid voice in my head right now. Why wouldn't I be adequate? I'm alive for one. Feeling inadequate is in the mind and it's the struggle that everyone goes through, but you just have to learn to see it happening and then decide to stamp it out. Will you be supported by Oz Study if you do a postgrad degree before postgrad years? As far as I know, for Oz Study, you have an allowable time for your degree or masters. So if you start medicine, the allowable time is four years plus one year, so five years. If you've done a masters before that, then they subtract that length of time from your allowable time. So if you've done a two years masters before that, then instead of five years of time that you're allowed to get an Oz Study, sorry, for medicine, you'll only get three years because you've already done two years because you're doing at the same level i'm quite sure that's how it works but i'm not entirely sure so please call them and don't make any decisions based on what i just said because they change their policies all the time can't increase my gamsat marks any tips thanks my best tip for this is to focus your attention on section two that is the section that you'll see the best results in when you do apply yourself the other two sections you will see results but that one is easier to see results in and the spread of marks is a lot bigger as well so it's a chance for you to get away from the competition it's easier to improve in section two. So if you spend more time there, then you'll see a greater increase in your score overall. I've made a bunch of videos about section two, so please check them out. I have gotten messages from a lot of people who said that it really helped them. So I think it can help you too. I had a couple of questions about how I felt after the GAMSAT and I felt horrible. I did not feel confident at all. I thought that maybe section two was fine, but I had no hope for section one and three. Felt very nervous. It's very hard to tell how you went. I'm sure there were some people out there who felt confident, but that wasn't my experience. I felt pretty depressed after, but I just tried my best to not think about it. So I just watched a lot of reality TV. I sunk myself into my uni work because at least that was something I could control. I hung out with my boyfriend a lot more because I hadn't really seen him or anyone during that time. I did my best to relax but of course 
there was those nights where it would just nag me and nag me, but they'd put you out of your misery pretty soon. So it's not gonna be too long for you being in that unknown. I wish I had some really profound answer about how I wasn't stressed and everything was just cool, calm, collected, zen, but that's just not true. I was really quite stressed. What type of volunteer work did I do? I had a lot of fun with volunteering. I thought it was really enjoyable. I volunteered at some really awesome places and it really helped me get a better understanding about whether or not I really wanted to study medicine or if it was just a fantasy that I had from watching too much scrubs. The first place I volunteered was the Peter James Centre, which is a geriatric rehabilitation ward. And I was doing a program called the Falls Prevention Program because a lot of deaths and injuries to elderly people come from falling down. And especially in a rehabilitation ward, their family and friends might not be able to visit them every day. They might not be able to like open their food containers enough to get enough sustenance. It can be very disorienting. So my role was every Monday I would go there and walk around, I think it was a 36 bed ward, it was a massive ward. And I would stop in every room and chat to the person there and they had like a whiteboard with like the name, their name and date on it. So I would erase the date and put today's date and help orient them. So be like, oh yeah, today's Sunday, this date. Then I would ask if they needed anything or how they're going or if they wanted to play a game. We had like a bag of like memory games that we would do as well. At lunchtime, the volunteers would help everyone open all their food containers because yeah, like I said before, sometimes they're not able to open all the containers can be quite hard. So I did all that and yeah, that was my day. That was what I did every Monday. And that was a really good one because I was actually in a hospital and I could see how the hierarchy of the hospital worked. And what is the doctor's role in all of this? And most importantly, it helped me figure out whether or not I enjoyed being in a hospital as well, because it's not for everyone. There's a certain smell to hospitals. <laughs> It's quite a serious atmosphere. You might not like the way you have to dress there. They're the kind of things you want to suss out before you're halfway through a $300,000 degree. And that is literally going to be the rest of your life. Secondly, I was a volunteer for St. John's Ambulance. And I only did that one for a short time because I ended up moving house halfway through. But with St. John's, you are doing first aid at music events or like school, cross country, every sort of event that could need first aid, St. John's does it. I thought it was really funny when I got towards the end of my degree and I had a really in-depth biomedical knowledge of disease and pathology and all of these things and yet I had no idea what to do in a first aid situation and what was great about St John's is you do practice first aid stuff every week with people in your division and it was really fun everyone was super nice so I really loved that aspect of it I love the hands-on aspect of it and learning actually how to manage a situation I think that's really helped me now because in St John's you do a lot of like acting out scenarios and in our classes for learning we do that a lot as well so it helps me to feel confident and not feel like awkward about acting things out because I've already done it quite a bit Another good thing about St. John's is that you're doing a lot of teamwork and in teams that are always shifting. You're learning some really good skills about how to get along with different people of different ages and different teams, which is super valuable. Lastly, I'm a volunteer for an organization called DanceWise, which is part of Harm Reduction Victoria. And my role at DanceWise is that I volunteer at music and dance events. And when I'm there, I'm part of a team that hosts a chill space. And what the chill space is, is just like a space for people to who are a bit overwhelmed by the event to come and sit down and chat or figure something out, whatever they need. And our role is to chat to them, figure out how they're going, see if we need to escalate it to medical and just make sure that everyone is safe. A lot of that work really boils down to mental health and managing mental health crises. That is also the place where I really, really started believing in my ability to become a doctor because a lot of the conversations that I'd have with people that would come in, people in my care, very, very frequently people would say stuff like, I've never told anyone that before. You're the first person I've told that to and stuff like that when they were experiencing something that was a bit hard and they wanted to talk about it. It really helped me to acknowledge that I really do have a knack for making people feel comfortable and making them feel okay with expressing themselves and talking about whatever they want and I realized that could be a really valuable skill in medicine. Thanks for coming to the Q&A today guys. If you enjoyed this video it would be awesome if you could like and comment because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for all your awesome questions and I'll chat to you guys next time.